Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm in Toronto. Uh, I'm doing an elective in the uh, uh, TNE service at Mount Sinai Hospital. It's amazing. Uh, I saw a couple of comments asking about uh, the uh, EA ratio uh, that we do on the uh, ECHO. What does it mean? And uh, how do we interpret it when, uh, when we read it off the report? Uh, so yeah, I thought I'd make this video to uh, highlight that. So first, uh, we have to get a good apical four chamber view. This is where we put the uh, probe. Uh, of course, the pointer is uh, on the left. Uh, this is the uh, four chamber view or the apical view with the labels uh, on the pictures. As you can see, LALB are on the left and RARB are on the uh, right side. And this is where we put the uh, sample gate for the PW, the pulse wave Doppler, uh, just below the uh, mitral valve. And this is the uh, Doppler tracing uh, we're gonna get. Uh, the first wave is the uh, E or the early uh, diastole, and the uh, second one is A or uh, basically uh, atrial uh, contraction or uh, atrial uh, kick. Now I just want you to pay attention to the ratio between the E and the A as you can see the E is smaller than the A making the ratio less than 1 and the more preterm the baby is the smaller the ratio is. Uh, this is um, uh, this table uh, shows some of the normal um, values that we use for the EA uh, ratio uh, as you can see the ratio goes uh, 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 towards one when the baby is more uh, like a uh, term uh, corrected and this is uh, as opposed to uh, the adult EA ratio and as you can see the E is uh, larger or bigger than the A making the ratio uh, uh, more than one so in new unit specifically in free term the E is smaller than the A and the ratio is less than one Now to understand this, let's review the cardiac cycle as well as the uh, phases of systole and diastole. So for systole, it starts from the peak of the R wave until the end of the T wave. For diastole, there are four stages. The first one is called isovolumic relaxation. This is before the mitral valve op uh, opens. The LV is still kind of trying to relax. The aortic valve is closed. This is uh, a short period. It's usually between 35 to uh, 50 milliseconds. When the pressure builds up in the um, uh, in the uh, left atrium, the mitral valve will open suddenly, and there will be a gush of blood from the left atrium towards the uh, uh, left ventricle. This is. Uh, what's called or what, what will cause a rapid filling of the left ventricle and this is consistent with the E wave. The next phase is the diastasis. Um, uh, usually we don't talk about it a lot, especially in uh, new units, probably because of the uh, fast heart rate comparing to adults. Usually this phase is uh, omitted. Um, the last one is the atrial contraction or the contribution of the atria um, uh, to uh, the diastolic phase. Um, and this is consistent with the A wave. So if we find um, a short uh, uh, IVRT or isovolumic relaxation time, uh, usually this is consistent with the uh, diastolic dysfunction of the LV. And also, as you uh, know, the E is already smaller than the uh, A or shorter than the A, which is suggestive of uh, diastolic dysfunction of the LV. Again, this is more specific to uh, uh, new needs, specifically for uh, preterm babies. Going back to the uh, adult EA ratio, uh, these are the four stages of the um, uh, diastolic dysfunction. Again, this is uh, from adult. Um, so normally uh, the E is um, uh, uh, larger uh, than the A, as you can see, and then uh, in stage two, when the E uh, goes uh, a little bit down, um, making the ratio less than one. 
this is the second stage which is suggestive of the systolic uh, dysfunction now following that when the pressure builds up in the uh, left ventricle the rapid filling will be pretty quick and pretty fast that making the e higher than or larger than the a again and the ratio will go normal again but again it's not normal that's why we call it pseudo normal ea ratio uh, and then the last thing when the pressure really builds up in the um, uh, left ventricle uh, because of the diastolic dysfunction or maybe because of let's say uh, like tamponade or pericardial effusion uh, uh, this is when the uh, a goes down the ratio probably is high but uh, the a is like pretty short so as you can see the preterm baby is already at stage two uh, um, if you want to compare uh, with with adult now, what is the etiology of the diastolic dysfunction that we see in neonatal myocardium, especially in preterm babies? Well, we have some of the physiologic consideration that we should think about. The first one is the myocardium is less mature. This is due to multiple factors. So we have less contractile element, we have more collagen in the uh, myocardial tissue, we have more water, so in general, less contractile elements. And also the calcium isn't uh, as available to those uh, muscular elements or contractile elements as it is in uh, pediatric or adult um, uh, 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 myocardium. Probably this is due to um, underdevelopment of the calcium channels uh, that are less available to uh, those muscles. All of this probably is behind the diastolic dysfunction that uh, the neonatal myocardium is already at. Also, I want to highlight the PDA severity score that is used uh, by uh, some of the centers. Um, as you can see, the E wave as well as the IBRT, uh, which are um, uh, components of the diastolic dysfunction, they are um, uh, parameters of the uh, uh, PDA severity score. So basically, the uh, bigger the E wave is and the shorter the IVRT is, the worse or the more severe the condition is. I hope this was uh, useful to understand um, the physiological concept of the EA ratio. Uh, so uh, yeah, thanks for uh, watching.